It's official. Your favorite shows are becoming exclusive. Introducing Flix. Beginning July 3rd, F Network will introduce an exclusive enhanced viewing experience for passport holders with access to free content all year long. So sign up for your F Network passport today. It's fast, simple, and free. Name one of the top 10 wedding photographers in the world. A legend behind the lens. World-renowned author. The one. The only. Kevin Cup. We've got clients coming. Can you please go out and sweep the front of the office? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay. All right. Thank you. Welcome back to PhotoPro. This week, we're going to pimp your speed light. This is my big speed light here. We're going to get funky. We're going to light some funky stuff. And I said funky three times already. That means we got to get funky and pimp our speed lights. <laughs> okay, on Pimp My Speed Light, we're going to talk about how to use two speed lights to create a really fun and effective lighting setup. And actually, this is pretty versatile because we can move it around. Our main light is just this simple Octobox. And this is a Photoflex small Octodome. And behind it, we have it fitted with a speed light. In the back of our scene, Alicia's got our Lastalite extending pole, which we've put a speed light on the top of that with a rogue grid. Again, we wanna focus that beam of light. And you'll notice sometimes I'll actually have the light in the scene, depending on uh, what I'm shooting. I like to get the flare from the lights. So I may actually include the flash head in the shot to create that kind of glowy, flary, um, almost like a Hollywood stage light kind of feel to it. Sometimes it's in, sometimes it's out, and I'm not too worried about it because stylistically we can do whatever the heck we want, right? As long as you like the feel of the shot. So this is really handy because she can move around, she can go, uh, if I need her to move just a few inches this way, that way, up and down, as our model starts to change her position. Uh, it's really nice to have somebody who can actively move that light to adjust, and it makes getting through the shoot a lot faster than if it was actually on a static stand. You wouldn't have too many options. The main light, I can control it here moving it where I need to move. But what I really want from this light is it to come down. So if we think of, uh, go ahead and lay your head back, Brittany. When she, Brittany's laying back this way, the light's gonna come down across her face. So it doesn't really matter what angle your subject has their face. Uh, all you need to do is position your light so that it would emulate a nice kind of a forward, downward facing light, just like it would naturally if you were having her sit straight up, you'd put the light maybe up here uh, directly above and coming down. So. Um, when she lays down, I'll move the light here. If she turns her head that way, I might move it a little bit that way. But it's a, it's a pretty city, simple setup. So two lights, and we're gonna try to create comes kind of a dramatic, kind of a sassy portrait here, head and shoulder shot. And then we'll move around into this uh, stairs here and try a few different, uh, maybe some three quarter, maybe a full length shot. Yeah, but using the same, just two lights. So let's get started now and see what we get. We changed our setup a little bit so that we are now on the stairs. We're kind of using the same setup though. The octodome becomes the main light, of course, and we're aiming it so when she's looking up towards me, it's right down on her face. And it's similar to what you might know as butterfly lighting. I talk about this in my lighting notebook, but butterfly lighting doesn't mean that we are actually gonna put butterflies anywhere on her face, but the little shadow under her nose is gonna be directly under it, and it creates this nice little shape. This happens when the light is directly above their face and slightly in front. So when she turns towards me, so Brittany turn this way and your chin up, her face will be right towards me, the light goes down and casts a little even shadow under her nose. So they call it butterfly lighting, I don't know why. But anyway, it works. And then we have our speed light with the grid in the back again, casting shadows through the railing and also putting a nice little highlight around her hair and shoulders. 
This lighting setup is really versatile. It's easy to move around as you discover new areas in your set. Now I'm shooting all of these with a lens baby. This is a new lens baby called the Edge 80. It's a flat field um, tilt lens where I can now move the plane of focus anywhere I want. But unlike the original lens baby where it had a sharp center spot and then the, all the edges went blurry, this one has a flat field of sharp focus and then the lower and uh, upper areas go out of focus depending on how you bend it around. So it's kind of like a view camera lens except you don't have the shift capabilities and it's an 80 millimeter which is a really nice length for portraits. So I've been experimenting with this lens and it's a lot of fun and it gives me some kind of dramatic uh, fall off in the uh, out of focus areas. So, give it a try. Well, that's it for this episode of Photo Pro and our Pimp Your Speed Light Edition. And we've tried a few different things. There's a lot more we could do. Obviously, when I get going, I get more and more ideas. And uh, sometimes it's good to make sure you plan enough time to experiment and play because your first idea may not be the one that you actually go with. And that typically happens with me. It'll start somewhere, and uh, the shot I end up using is probably one well into the shoot, not the first idea I had. So give yourself time to play and use our inexpensive and easy to move speed light tools and you've got something you can use just about anywhere. Hey, don't forget, we wanna hear from you, so click on the homework link. And how about uploading some photos that you've taken with a similar lighting setup to this? If you have something like this you can try or if you end up getting a setup like this, take some of your fun Hollywoodish photos and submit them to PhotoPro so we can all take a look and get some ideas to share. I'll see you next week on Photo Pro. Hey there, new photographer. If you are just getting started, you're probably overwhelmed with choices on where to spend your money first. Well, you know what? There are a lot of choices, but there are a few things that really do pay off. Where are the top places to spend your money first as a new photographer? So tune in next week on Photo Pro. Photo Pro was brought to you by White House Custom Color. Like the music? Special thanks to Triple Scoop Music. Frame Network giveaways are brought to you by B&H. Head to giveaways.framenetwork.com for your chance to win. Find out more about the equipment used in this episode on framenetwork.com.